Boy, What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Weiss Schwartz Study Hall. Today we got the Buddy Cast. It's me, James, and I'm here with. Hi, my name's Awkward Andrew. What's up? Awkward Andrew. Uh, today we're at the Buddy Cast. Uh, we had a couple of people who just couldn't make it for the cast, and obviously we're still in quarantine and whatnot, so we don't have a, like a full group, and we're not able to like meet up or anything. So we're still gonna do like a little Buddy Cast, me and him, a Discord little chat. And we're going to go over things. Uh, like always, make sure you go to Facebook, YouTube, and Patreon, all under TCG University. Check out our content. Uh, we're available on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. Give us five stars. Uh, if we're not on the site you, you use, let us know, and we'll put it out on that site. Um, thanks to all of our junior or higher sponsors. We got ID, Andrew Dang, Clay Cardwell, Jay Rogers, Dret Hubbard, Justin Farce, Kat Maria, Kevin Brober, Lucinda Letica, Paul Casagrande, Samantha Stevens, Theodore Ruiz, and Tyler Zane Pease. We also have two sponsors today. They are Cards Custom Build and Inked Gaming, but you'll see an ad for them later. So, uh, Andrew, how are you today? Oh, dude, I'm at home. Yep, same, doing, same, doing same. just fine. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the studio. Oh, shit, dude. I, uh, I went outside for the first time in eight days yesterday. That was kind of scary, but whatever. I'm you're alive. Such a little, you're such a little girl. <laughs> I hate it. Oh, God, dude. Hey, I mean, you still have to go to work, so I, I kind of feel bad like, for you. But, well, yeah. I mean, I also the other day I went to Buffalo Wild Wings. I hung out with Oliver. We played some. We played some White Schwartz. I Wait, went you to, went to like beat ups in person? Well, I went. We picked up. We had. We had. We picked up an order. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I, like, oh, I still had to. Go, I had to go in and get it. Um, uh, was it curbside? Yeah. Well, like I could have did curbside. I just went and get it. I don't care. Oh. So like I don't. I don't care. Jeez, geez. Um, and then I went to Dragon's Lair to pick up some four rows for our new uh, card holder or card cabinet. Uh, five rows don't really fit, so like we've got four rows because they fit really nicely inside there. Oh, nice. um, How many of those did you pick up? I picked up five of them. One for the extra Final Fantasy stuff that didn't end up in boxes. And then two for each of the two drawers we have for UFS currently. Dude, what about the Vice Force drawer? Hit um, me with it. I'm the only one who plays Vice Force, so that's all in my room. Ah, I see. And it's just a, it's two books full of sword art and a single book full of Excel world. Nice. And then I got a fat stack of uh, log horizon and a fat stack of goblin slayer. Dude, you gotta, you gotta start building out those collections. Get on it. Well, I mean, I, I'm missing like maybe 20 cards max from like the first order set. Uh, and fair. it's just more of like the expensive stuff. And I think Jake does a couple of my stuff that I think he has to replace. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, but other than that, it's not it's not too bad. Um, yeah. It's just mostly like playing, having four podcasts for four different shows, and me concurrently, technically playing Dragon Ball, Final Fantasy, Y Shorts, and UFS, and all <clears throat> having my own personal stuff for that. I have a lot in my room. Yeah. Like I'm the only I'm... one in the house that play really plays Dragon Ball, so I have like an entire corner of my room that's just like six binders full of Dragon Ball, a uh, couple of boxes and whatnot. Jeez. Those are also play sets. Well, they're not complete play sets, but they're like the same thing as like my binders, just play sets of what I have. You, you, um, you know what it sounds like? <laughs> I, so, like sounds like you need a cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> that was what, because here's also the thing. I have the entire TCG store in there too. Like, oh, really? So like I have all of my shit in like a separate section and then just like a table that has just the stuff just stacked on it. And you want it? Get a, d just get a cabinet and unscrew like the front so you can like easily access all the boxes. Actually, our, our next time you're over here, the cabinet's not that bad. Like it's it's really nice. Like huh, it's an yeah, older um... it's an older cabinet, but it fits real nice. I'll send you pictures later. Okay. Uh, but that's kind of what I did yesterday. Was I went outside and I did a lot more than you did. No, oh, that's fair. And I go I, to work daily. I went Actually, to the grocery store. Hey, I go yeah. to work daily. I at work home. at the I work <laughs> at the grocery store. Oh Jesus. Uh, actually, right, yesterday I went to the park. This you, sir. I went to the park. Oh God! <laughs> and I played basketball. And strangely enough, there were like ten people at the park after I showed up. After they showed up after me. Oh God! People don't know how to wake up in the morning and go play basketball. Jesus! You hey, gotta I wake mean, up was... when you gotta wake up when it's chilly. Because then it <laughs> warms up and it warms you. It warms with you. What are you talking about? You you stay awake when it's cold. Obviously, if you work overnights, you stay awake when it's cold. No, like I, I got there by like 11. It was like really chilly. And I was like, it's OK. Once I start moving, I'll start warming up. I was, I was playing basketball. And mm. then by like noon, it was really nice. out Because like it was nice yesterday. It's not bad. 
Yeah. Hey, Matt, at least you're you're staying active. I uh, I've, I've been your house been cleaning. For I mean, I've been cleaning a bit, and then I'm starting to ride. We have a exercise bike upstairs, so I'm starting to ride that. Yeah, I've uh, I've been getting fat, and by that I mean I'm I'm fat. <laughs> Not getting. I've been. <laughs> so I need to get back in some shape. Hey, man, is... got to take those first steps, but. Yeah, get getting into the the topics there. Which one? Which one do you want to hit first? Uh, I think we just start with the one we we have for the title of the show, which is deck breaking. Deck breaking. Oh gosh. So, so uh, uh, this idea yeah, came from it because uh, we were trying to come up with ideas for the podcast this week, and one of the ideas I came up with was what's what's the how do you choose your climax combo? Do you choose the one zeros, the three zeros, uh, the three twos, the two ones, or like do you, do you choose zero combos? Level zero combos. What do you? How do you choose your zero combos? And then it kind of broke down into um, kind of like breaking the meta decks because uh, one of the decks I currently want to build is a three two climax combo priestess deck that also plays the one zero climax combo from the set for gobl- uh, the goblin slayer combo. Which goblin the goblin slayers are thirty five dollars a piece and the priests themselves are ten to fifteen. So like yeah. right there is like two to two hundred and change. Just yeah. to get two places of a card, so like right now my my predicament is I'm playing like I'm playing the three two climax combo Goblin Slayer is my thing. We're playing three of that and then two of the we're playing three of its climax, two of the standby, and then we're playing the one zero Goblin Slayer from the set. I mean from the uh, trial deck, which in my opinion, despite the fact despite the fact that they printed a better one zero in the set. Is an incredibly good one zero, like it's nuts how good that one zero is. Yeah, I, th- I think going further into it, like the the the, the Goblin Slayer one zero from the set is obviously really strong. Oh yeah. But for budget alternatives, if you play just that one changed card in the deck, which it's, yeah, it changes the flow, but it still offers consistency in a one zero. It, it changes one hundred and fifty dollars. It it swaps out one hundred and fifty dollars basically. Yeah, it switches out that hundred fifty dollars. You still have something that that can be relevant. It's not something that you're gonna go for like three of in a turn, uh, but you you definitely I mean, still you could. play. You could. I mean, you can, but then you're punishing yourself for three damage. I, I think it's more of like a a two of at most, just because I, I don't like risking pushing myself that far. And I, I guess it does also depend on your game state. So yeah, yeah. But I think it's, it's like... still definitely really relevant. Like, cause like my deck plays res and we play a, we actually play a bunch, a bunch of healers. Uh, strictly on the purpose of, I like healing. It's, it's, I think it's funny. It's like my yeah. play style in general as a person. So like, but like yeah. we were talking about like the price differential of just like changing the three, the one zero out. And then like, if you had to take out the priestess, putting it like, cause like the three, two from the uh, trial deck isn't bad either. Mm-hmm. Like it, yeah. it's it's not a terrible substitute, or like even the three two goblin slayer that climax combos for burn one, and it stacks. It's cheap and it's not too expensive either. Like yeah, it's a just very by, good replacement. Just by changing that, say say you took the meta, the meta build that has priestess or the meta build that has standby. If you took that build and just changed the one zero goblin slayer, you're looking at an eighty five to one hundred forty dollar deck, and that that's also. Uh, counting out or counting in the differential for having a holy dance priestess which is the promo that we were yeah, talking about last like week 15 20 dollar promo yeah yeah it's a it's like a 22 ish i believe um i haven't looked at it today but i do that yeah. too Ew. nice yeah but uh, since a lot of people don't have that if you're wanting to play essentially a deck with that alternative combo it cuts it down from 200 to 250 to 300 dollars all the way down to a eighty-five to one hundred forty-dollar deck, which is a lot more which is cost-effective for very doable. I'd say you know younger people or people that are just looking to get into the game and really want to play Goblin Slayer. Yeah, like because like I want to play Goblin Slayer, and I specifically just want to play Priestess because she's one of my favorite characters from like the series, and then like she also does something super to my play style in general, which is just uh, basically gain life or nag soul, which is really cool to me. Which is just yeah. super super hard defense, and mm-hmm. she's an early play, which is just nuts to me. Yeah, I think the fact that it goes uh, full board for the uh, for the Dang Soul, it, it just makes that much of a difference. 
Because oh, yeah. a lot of a lot especially, of sets prior were only as, that slot. Yeah, especially when um, it's a uh, early play as well, mm -hmm. and the early play is not hard to do. It's just review the one card you hold in your hand. Yeah, so like you, you can guarantee you, you you're gonna clock. trigger it. Yeah, clock. Sorry, sorry. Clock. The UFS terms. Like I said, I play four different card games. <laughs> yeah, no, I. But like yeah, having that the, one condition is so easy. Oh yeah, and then just being able to drop it on like drop it at level two and just go, cool. You're gonna be Nag Soul for a couple turns as I uh, try to like slow your game down. Yeah, and also having the clock condition be a card that's also just very effective at doing its yeah. job early game oh, is yeah. so helpful because like a, literally it's a hand cycle that gets through your deck faster. Yeah. Like for sure. card fixing and getting through your deck faster to help efficiently make sure that you're blocking or getting your deck back to a point where it can block is just, just super effective. Yeah, ups yeah. consistency. Yeah, and then if you're also playing the standby build uh, and you're not playing the Priest's top end, like even the availability of having the early damage cry as well is it's just so strong. Ooh, what if we played like um, a Priestess... Priestess and standby. Just priestess standby and cut out the one zero combo. Yeah, because like, because like then you don't have to risk playing the one zero that kills pings you, and you just kind of <laughs> replace that with the suicider that checks the top two. Oh yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that. And, and then, then you uh, keep you keep your red count as well as keeping your one zeros count, and you don't end up spending anything to do anything. Yeah, and then you can throw in the uh, uh, I can't remember his name, but the one one. Uh, what's his name? The one one spearman. Yeah, one one spearman. Because then the one that has you're encore? power and encore. Yeah. Yeah, like that's the, that's actually not that bad of an idea. Yeah, and that that was actually something that it's sort of similar to what our friend JJ he took to worlds. He uh he got like fourth or fifth was a sword art build that didn't didn't effectively run a one a one one combo. So he's running the uh, the Yui combo that we were talking about. Yeah. Show, which. It, it's a 1-1 one -one combo, sure, but it's not effectively a 1-1 one -one combo. Yeah, it doesn't opinion. do anything. Yeah, it doesn't, it yeah, doesn't do combo, anything to The combo cluster. doesn't do anything, do anything to his, your opponent. Yeah, and it's not... I wouldn't say it's also specifically... Like, yeah, it's printed on a level 1 card, but like it's something that you can play throughout the game once you're past yeah, level Especially one. the way he was trying to abuse it. Yeah, because he, he was running standby in that combo and nothing else, and just yeah. continuing in the gameplay... Which essentially would be the same thing that you're doing if you play the standby, um, if you play standby and then the uh, three two, the three two. Yeah, because then you could just yeah. sit there and uh, you stand by all your cool pieces. Like you get witch, and then you can get um, you can get uh, sword maiden out, mm -hmm. and then witch just checks top on damage, and then you could check the top two with uh, the sword maiden. Sword maiden also heals on its own. Like it just. There's a lot of cool things you can do with the deck. Yeah, I, th I think that's that was. I might, very I might look into that because then, like, because then my build only needs to get the priestess, yeah. and I can kind of like switch that around, and then without having to pay like 150 dollars to get some uh, goblin slayers. Yeah, I, I mean, even if you changed it to standby, because then you're just negating playing a level one comp. Yeah. Um, you're still probably looking at about that eighty five ish dollar range, but oh, yeah, still not but, bad. But like half of that's pump, just the priestess too. Yeah, I think you pump up the number of brainstormers in the deck just from standard builds that are running three, you probably want to run four just for insurance, but yeah. Or I think that um, could still present something that's at least effective. You know, that th yeah. this isn't for like your your meta I wanna go to worlds person necessarily, but this is for like anyone who's trying to get into the game or or just somebody you know, somebody who just doesn't want to spend $150 on Goblin Slayers, but still wants to try and play with everybody else. Yeah. I well, feel, I mean, I like, feel like you know, they get washed. Dip the toe, you know, dip your toes into the set before you yeah. would fully commit to even buying it if you want to run that build. Um, another thing that people could look at is a lot of the Facebook groups with everything that's going on. People, you know, are obviously uh, trying to buy and some people are trying to sell yeah, cards. Some people are knowing it's, it's a time to pick up because people are getting rid of and some people are trying to get rid of because they need the money. Yeah, and I, I saw a Goblin Slayer build. It was actually the build, which is priced out last time I priced it at two fifty. Someone was, or it was. I saw some. It was, I... was three hundred. They were selling it. The Priestess build prices out at about three hundred plus, but someone was selling it for two hundred with both combos. Yeah, I saw. I think I saw that post. And I went. 
that's 200 i was like man that's such a good deal yeah i want it yeah i i'm pretty like, sure I, it like sold that day but like i saw it had it had all the priestesses i wanted had four of the one zero combo i was like 200 not bad yeah 200 like, not man. bad which yeah people are getting rid of cards for unfortunate circumstances because they have bills that they might yeah. need to pay but at the same time you know, if if you can help them out by essentially filling the demand for the deck, I mean, I, I wouldn't say what, you're doing it. You get what bad. you want, and you help their needs. So, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just it's how markets work. So, it's yeah, definitely it's effective. And it's something that I feel like you know we're we're specifically applying to Goblin Slayer, but you can apply that that same concept to many other sets where like you have very important level one combos, mm -hmm. um, like Fate. There's so many different builds that you can run for fate right now just because it has such a deep card pool. Oh yeah. That I think it's kind it's of the same way I feel about it. sword art too. Yeah, because like there's a point where you get into the metagame and people are very narrow minded to like, hey, it has to be this deck or hey, it has to be this deck. But there's also opportunities for other decks to just kind of crop up. Yeah. That can that can still like be my very log effective. horizon deck. <laughs> okay, I don't know about that, but <laughs> hey, you're you're not ready for this log horizon deck. Yeah, and You're just like, ready. if you think about Sword Art, there's still a lot of like really good level zero tech, and if you cut out the Sugaha and just throw in a standard Brainstormer and then take out the clean cut, or the time to get serious, uh, the time to get serious Kirito, if you cut out those two cards in a Sword Art build. You're minimizing your cost by already two hundred dollars just by doing that, or more That's at this so point. So bad. Yeah. Two hundred dollars by cutting, bad cutting zeros gross it's 200 dollars by cutting effectively six to eight cards <laughs> that's terrible yeah. for that's terrible for card games yeah well i mean it's just because the, the sets aren't available which kind of leads us into another topic that we want to talk about but yeah it's just because availability for sword art anymore is just crazy you have to buy it off of someone pretty much if you want to buy it just because definitely like even before the show, I was looking for the card Sister Fond of Brother or Sister Fond of her Brother Leafa, which was printed in uh, Ordinal Scale, and I literally only found it on TCG Player. Every other site that I commonly shop off of was sold out, yeah. and they've probably been sold out for quite a while. No problem. Or it's either they've been sold out for a while, or as soon as I got a copy, it snapped. <laughs> you were looking for that card too for your deck, weren't you? For which one? Is that for your Sao deck? Sister Fond of her Brother Leafa. Or did yeah? Or did you already have it? Uh, so I actually need to pick up three, and I can only find two, and they're priced at forty a piece. Yeah, that's eighty dollars, my dude. Yeah, and I I run three, so yeah. <laughs> uh, if you find them on the low end, they're thirty. If you find them on the high end, they're probably about forty. Yeah. Yeah. It's but, terrible. <laughs> I mean, even so. Uh, again, we we were mostly applying it to Sword Art, but you can apply oh. or not Sword Art, but Goblin Slayer, but you can apply it to Sword Art. Even just by doing that, just to kind of cards, yeah. You're not necessarily breaking the meta build because you can still effectively have the top end for there, but you're just making sure that you're not destroying your wallet or your bank account by buying those eight oh, yeah, cards. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you you can also apply that to other sets back on because there's still other things that are that are still viable in the sets because um, you could cut the Aaron pretty easily, even though the Aaron is just a terrific card. It's not. I would I wouldn't say it's not an absolute card if you want to play Attack on Titan because there's mm -hmm. there's still the wall build which is still pretty funny and pretty effective, um, and then uh, I'd say other sets like um, even for example like Persona, there's been so much debate if you run the one ones which are a lot cheaper than some of the other options or at least they they used to be more expensive like the the two ones that people played. Because uh, there's a green two one and the yellow two one, and then there's the the one zero that has the marker under that flips. Like, all those have different price points, and it's just something to think about. Like, hey, if I cut this combo, can I still get by by playing this combo and achieve what I want at the end of the game? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the first sponsor of this week's podcast is InkedGaming.com. Are you looking to get a custom playmat? Well, then we suggest you check out InkedGaming.com. They have custom playmats, dice bags, mouse pads, and much much more shout out of a cannon james what would you get on a playmat if you had to pick one right now seven swell from america seven what is that it's like the after it's the aftermath of like them launching a nuke practically 
I love Nuke. I love Nuke. I love Nuke. Yeah. Um, technically, it's like a reaction between like a robot and. Well, you can <laughs> you can get it you can get it on a play mat. What would you get? Uh, I'm changing. I'm Izuken. Izuken. Yeah. What is that? Stop. New anime. No. New, New anime? anime right now. Yeah. I fall in love with it. Is it, he, is it really good? It's it like Ed and Eddie the it's, anime. So it's it has been described, described as if Ed Ed and Eddie was an anime about three girls making an anime. Wow. Well, it is also. Made by the same guy that made Ping Pong the Animation. I'm super in. You could definitely get that on a playmat <laughs> with InkGaming.com. <laughs> Spider-Man, obviously. Uh, they even recently added stitch options to their playmats and mouse pads as well. I've got a couple of these stitched playmats. They are exceptionally good. They're so, so good. They just never fray. They never curl. Nothing. Um, so if you want to get 10% off of your order, please use the code TCGUniversity, all caps, no spaces at checkout, and help support the channel by customizing your game to your style. In addition to Ink Gaming, we've also got Cards Custom Build. Are you in a cosplay? Looking to get in a cosplay? Or you want to show up to events dressed as your favorite character? Well, Cards Custom Build can help. Cards Custom Build creates everything from cosplay accessories like props, trinkets, or weaponry, all the way to full costumes. Full stop. James, if you had Cards Custom Build making something right now, what would it be? It could be anything. Full costume or... It would probably be uh, Weiss's weapon from Ruby. Are you sure? Because he could easily make the gun from Gears of War. Easily. The big well, chainsaw there's a, gun? There's a lot. There's a lot I would want. Well, okay? Give me an example. Yeah, you got the Gears chainsaw. Uh-huh. You got the Halo sword. Uh-huh. You got a bunch of things you could do. He would do some sick stuff with the Halo sword. Just saying. It'd be real, real pretty. Tyler, how about you, man? What would you want? Something from Steven Universe, I think. Yeah? yeah. You get the Steven Universe shield? The shield and the sword. Or like Garnet's Gauntlet. Oh, that'd be cool. Those those sound hype. Those sound hype. So if you uh if you want a cosplay made of perfectly flowing cloth or maybe a want rigid battle armor, the new Mandalorian show just came out and finished. Season two's coming out. He's an expert at making a bunch of nerdy Star Wars stuff. Uh, the work is guaranteed to make you the talk of the con. So go over to Cards Custom Build on either Facebook or on their Etsy account. Link will be in the description down below. Make sure to mention that TCGU sent you uh, their way, and you will get five percent off your entire order. Back to the show. If you want, we can get to our next topic, since we yeah. touched on it slightly, which is reprints. Yeah. We can get on to that. So with reprints, there's kind of two ways that we were, we were thinking about this. And the first one that we were thinking about for reprints was like re-edit sets that are coming, or at least mm -hmm. potentially coming. I'd say uh, the re -edit, super re zero. Yeah, those two, I'd say, have a pretty high likelihood of coming to English. And we also already have the... Um, the sword art re-edit, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so th that's one consideration for reprints, but we're also looking at just overall reprints of, of sets that have been available. Um, and a lot of people might say, you know, hey, reprints aren't the best because they devalue your cards, but also it helps encourage more people to get into the game. So that's kind of what we were wanting to like, get into. Who's going to be able to buy all those uh, Orno scale uh, leafas? Like... <laughs> I'm sure someone probably has like three decks with them in there and they're like, hey, I'm not ever get rid of these, which is just kind of, I mean, sure, that's a cool collector's aspect, but at the same time, if other people want to play it. Yeah, definitely. I'm not saying it's necessarily rude because you already have the cards, but I'd say it's something to be considerate of just because the, the markets aren't necessarily open to, yeah. to everyone. Because like that's how, um, that's kind of how like sort of ended up being like for the, in my opinion, when I when I was when I like really started playing, like five six years ago, for like the first two sets, anytime they hit the shop, they were gone, mm -hmm. just gone. You didn't have a chance for anything. Yeah, they'd hit the table and they were gone. Oh yeah, so, like, that's good. Being able to get a hold of them was just real. Started. Oh yeah, and just being yeah. able to get a hold of things was just real rough. Yeah, and it still kind of is depending on what set you want to play. Like obviously, yeah. the newer sets are going to be more available. But if you look and you go like buy a deck off of a lot of sites um you know something that i would say is in a moderate range of not necessarily new but not necessarily old um fate stuff that was just three sets ago that's terrible to get um yeah so surprisingly bunny girl senpai is actually hard to get a hold of if you're not buying a solid deck from someone um and by hard to get i mean you're either going to pay a ridiculous price for the card or it's just not available at sites that you would normally want to purchase that bunny girl's oddly more popular in my opinion too surprisingly yeah. than in than fate in my opinion from what i've been from what i've seen it's just yeah. more popular i think it's just the characters yeah the, I, the main character for bunny girl is just very 
It's very popular like, for people. Yeah, I, I mean, the show's fantastic if, if you haven't watched it. I enjoyed it. it. I, I, um, I Actually, I think I read it, but, like, I enjoyed it. Dude, 10 out of 10. Would recommend just giving it a nice watch. Uh, the first three episodes are fantastic. Um, but uh, specifically I definitely read it, so I'll cards. probably have to watch it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but going into the set, like, if you were to go online right now, try to buy the 3-2, say, Kaede, uh, a lot of places are probably going to try to get you for 30 when it's really, or it should be, like, a 20-ish dollar card. Um, so that's just, like, something to look at as far as, like, reprints. Not that they're a good thing if they're done in a great quantity, but if they just rolled out, say, another couple of cases, or not cases, but, like, pallets just to distribute around, I think it'd make it a lot more accessible and available, especially I for for new people getting into the game. Because Vice is already, when thinking about it, it's a more expensive game, which yeah. to get more people into it and to make it more accessible, I think they need to have larger print runs, which will affect the price slightly, which, yeah, that hurts your, your shops that open and sell cards. But at the same time, if they're opening up a box and there's three different rares in there that are, say, 20 25-ish dollars, they're already making a lot of money off of just that. Because if you open a case, you're generally going to get two play sets. If you get a $20 card or a $30 card and you sell just that one play set, you're already paying for basically a fourth to a third of your case. Oh, yeah, definitely. So I think like, I think they balance it out. And then you have the foils on top. That's not even counting foils. Like, foils, foils cost a shit ton in this game. Yeah, I think foils, they, they have respectable prices, depending on what set you're getting into. But I think That's the double R market go down from where it's can at we, a little can bit. We change the, can we change our third topic to SPs were a mistake? SPs were a mistake? Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, is, is this the UFS blood coming out? This is this is the UFS blood coming out because I want to build a darling in the Franks deck. And to max rarity that fucking deck, I have to buy four 3-2 Climax Combo Streltsias, and they're $215 a piece. Yeah, I, that's, I that's pretty $860. That's $860. For some I mean, cool, ass, I want the card so bad. <laughs> I mean, so Max it's Rarity. be depressed because I want it. Max Rarity obviously comes with a price. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, it's something to think about because like some cases aren't printed to the same specifications as others. Like Bang Dream, right? Pretty much every box of Bang Dream that you open when it was like the second set or I think onwards because they have like so many SPs, SPMs, uh, SSPs. Mm -hmm. um, I think just due to that fact. Those cards, they do have a higher price range, but for like stuff that has your standard, like maybe three per case and then a secret rare or four per case, I think those prices could could effectively go down to to like where Goblin Slayer is at. Because Goblin Slayer is like a hundred dollars per SP, whereas if you look at Bunny Girl Senpai, which is two SPs per case and then you get a secret um, per you get a secret per carton, so it, it is a little bit lower, but you have $400 SPs, $200 SPs, $300 SP, and then the trial deck SP is also just $400 flat. Um, so, like, I think the pricing on that is a little bit high for where it should be. I get that you're only getting two per carton, but if you get, say, the good two, that's seven, or per, per case, not carton, um, if you get two good SPs, you're looking at six to seven hundred dollars of your case paid off, and you have the rest of the cards to sell. <laughs> Whereas Goblin Slayer, it was a three of. It Goblin Slayer being, you know, one of your top tier decks, I think it's a lot more respectable because your highest SP right now, that's in set, is a hundred thirty dollars. Not bad. And that is just Priestess, right? Yeah, that's the three two priestess. The other mo the the most expensive SP is the trial deck one, which is again that's more of a chase thing, which is one hundred fifty dollars. And I'd say that's still respectable because it's a tier one. Like people are going to be playing this whenever we have the ability to go out and play regionals. Yeah. You're going to see that deck left, right, and center. Yeah. So I think <laughs> there needs to be a better a balance in there somewhere. I, I think definitely with hitting How on do you think if like, foils, so there like, needs to be a better balance. So like JP prints more sets than we get. We get like once one a month. JP yeah. gets like two, right? JP gets two, sometimes three. And with the pushbacks, they're probably going to be looking at three three sets a month for a while. Yeah. 
How would you do? You think it would influence the price of uh, if English got that? If we, do you think it would influence those prices at all? I think it would influence the price just due to the amount of sets we'd have. The only and problem the with it is I don't think that we have enough consumers to sustain that type of market. Ah, uh, that that is definitely a thing they'll have to look out for. I was just thinking like. Yeah. Because, like, if you gave people more options, they would buy less of one thing and more of a different one. So, like, then yeah. you'd have, like, your real big chase sets would be, like, Sword Art. Bunny mm-hmm. Girl would probably be really big. Uh, as far as I know, Kanosuba's really big, too. It's, like, a, like an American set. Like, things people yeah. really like. As, like, uh, not just, like, characters, but, like, as, like, a, like, as the anime itself. Yeah. As so, a, yeah, a, those a, are... Part of a card game. Those are large sets. Um, specifically talking about like expensive decks because i personally know because i've been going through and buying all the meta decks you fucking dweeb <laughs> um you're actually I have a give me a second i have a picture i'm going to reference for this um this is based off of a off of a post i was going through but attack on titan that's like a 350 dollars meta deck yeah right um you have bang dream which is also pretty high up there right now Bang Dream, you're looking at probably about $500 for the meta deck, right? Love Live Sunshine, which was doing pretty well, that's five to six. Uh, Konosuba is about a $500 deck. Sword Art's about a $500 deck. Um, Fate, I got for a really good deal, but if you buy it at regular price, it's probably another $500 deck. Uh, Bunny Girl's cheaper at about... I'd say 250 if you get a good deal. If you get a bad deal, you're probably looking at about 300 right now, 350. And then Sword Art, you're looking at about $500. Yeah, um, like... So, like all of your meta decks, they're sitting about $500. The only reason Bunny Girl, I'd say, is a bit cheaper is because it hasn't had enough testing of the waters. It but as also... soon as we start to see the regional results, that. that it also test... doesn't have its second set, right? Uh, we don't have the second set, but the only thing that really changes from at least the build that I'm prepping for um, is your top end because your top end goes to the nuts Nautica that's coming out. That is um, it's the same as your, as your cell world combo where on attack with combo, you it have two gives things a, like burn. Yeah. It gives burn, but it's burn plus one. So you reveal plus one. So James, I think you might need to build bunny girl. Nah, I see. <laughs> I remember the rest you of saying you like that combo. Well, I th- I, so like, here's the thing. I can care less about the combo. I like Jesus. I like Kuro Yukihime. Jesus, I mean, well, if you ever want to borrow it, also I'm you done. need to borrow. You need to. I told you you could borrow that Goblin Slayer build, and this guy walks into our locals challenge, which is the last tournament we got to do before all this craziness. He walked in, and I remember telling him like the day before, like, "Hey, man, if you want to borrow the Goblin Slayer deck, go for it." And he's like, "Nah, you don't play this Atlas deck." Yeah. Jesus. De- uh, hey, okay. uh, my deck fucked me. That was it. <laughs> I got hey, I got second the week before playing the oh, yeah. same deck. That's fair. Wait, wh- you were were you even playing that deck or was that Larry? No, Larry played the week before that. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. So Larry That's beat nice. you the week before that. I beat you the week after that. Yeah. And then you beat me the week the week of the shop challenge. Because <laughs> we clapped everyone with Attack on Titan. Fucking Except for nerd. one match where I just got super unlucky. It happens. But yeah. Uh, I, so going I back. Just, to so like, like really, I just want to see sets. Like, I'd like to see the Log Horizon extra booster. I'm a huge fan of Clan Ed, and I wish we can get Key Twentieth. Yeah. Like Key Twentieth is would be sick for me. So here, here's a question, um, that kind of goes along with topics it, it, or topic. If we're if we're talking about printing. Would you like to see more surveys of of what we would like to see? Of, yeah, of Bushy Road going out and saying, hey, we can get these sets. Because right now, the, the way that they do it, saying, hey, what set would you like to see? I would like to see more of a poll that says, hey, if we can obtain these rights, which set would you want more? I, I would want to see more of that type I of survey. I would like to see, I'd like to see more of both, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, can, I can understand both, but like, like if yeah. every month at the shop challenge they asked they they had everyone had like a survey to fill out, I'd be down. Yeah, actually, I'd say that would be more. Like if like the last true. week, the oh. last week of a month, if like just like a website opened up like the poll and you just took the poll quiz and just filled yeah. all that out, 
but it was only live for like the last seven days. Some, uh, yeah, I can see that. I, just because, like, I think the best way for them to continue getting more players, because I, I mean, a lot of their set moves. I think, I think Adventure Time is going to be really good for getting more people in the game. I yeah. we don't know how the set's going to be yet, of course. But uh, I don't know how well it's going to be at keeping people, because to me, Adventure Time is yeah. really cool as like an American license. But, but it like, doesn't fit I, the theme, right? It doesn't fit White Schwartz, in my opinion. It just doesn't. Yeah, that, that's what I is get it, from it. It's too. kind of the same way I felt about Batman Ninja, but Bat, Batman Ninja kind of got away with it because it has an anime. Like that was that was the reason it gets away with it. Yeah, all all I know is if the attack or not the attack, if the Adventure Time set doesn't have a card that says I can flute my pig, I'm not playing it. If it doesn't have bacon, pancakes, bacon pancakes, I'll oh, be okay. upset. Oh god, do climax combo. <laughs> <laughs> Make a big pancakes. Yeah. No, I but so I think if we saw more polls just kind of saying like, hey, if we can get these licenses or like or saying, hey, these licenses are available to us, what set do you want to see? I think that'd be a lot better for the player base, just so yeah. we can we can more so as a player base guide it, um, rather than it being more of a hey, we're printing this set in Hey, did you like Bang Dream? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, do you like Bang Dream? Yeah, that's. that's do you want to see like Love Live Seven? Good thing. Do you want to see the seventh the Love Life set? Yeah, I, but I think if, if they did that, you know, then they could be like, "Hey, we might be able to get the rights to say." I, I'm not saying this is a set at all, but like, say if they they reached out to Square Enix and they're like, "Hey, we got we have the t the Trials of Mana uh, license on the line. We could get it. Would you like to see a set for that?" I'd be like. Hit me up right now, because that set would be sick. Um, or, like, even if they could get, like, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles a set. It already has a game, so they're not going to sell it. But, like, that would be just sick. Um, and then we could, like, vote on that. Okay. So, like, James, you're a fan of Clannad, right? Say yeah, you're like, hey, we could get Clannad for English, or we could get a Ruka 7 for English. Which Ruka one would you vote for? Uh, Stop. Just Ruka 7. <laughs> no. <laughs> I... Clannad out the window. Ruka 7 right now. Put yeah, it on but... the table. <laughs> I, I'd I will a, give both my kidneys for this. Oh, crap. Dude. That's like, <laughs> I mean, effectively, that'd be like spending 60 ish thousand dollars if you gave both your kidneys. I will do it right now. <laughs> You'd be dead, but. <laughs> um, no, but a, I think if, a, if. A kidney and one of my spleens. Because right now, the way I, that I, I feel about I the show is at least. One. Yeah, right now, the, the way that I feel about the surveys is they're more of a response that they're trying to get information from. But I think if they moved it more of, hey, we can get these licenses and turn it into a guided response system, they're kind I think of looking at what they're guide. kind of looking at what type of anime people want to see, rather than what exactly people want to see. Did yeah. did everybody say they want to see a shonen? Well, we'll pick up a shonen. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's how I kind of feel about it. Yeah, I, I get that, but at the same time, like, you know, a lot of people are like, hey. Attack on Titan was pretty cool. The show's good. A lot of people like the show. Let's get more Attack on Titan because set three is, I'd say, definitely within the realm of possibility. God, please no. Yeah, it's please too no. But it's it's, it's... too powerful. Uh, if they did it, they have to get rid of. They have to get rid of maneuver. Yeah, I could see that. If, if they got rid of or the gear. Um, yeah, gear, gear. Sorry. See, the only thing so. I don't think that they print anything that would ever be better than the Aaron combo because I feel like they're like, hey, we made a mistake with printing this. But the fear that yeah, I have Have you is... seen Alice? Of course they made a mistake doing it. They nerfed the fuck out of Alice. Yeah, no, but I think um, I think if uh, they printed another set, the main fear I'd have is better level zero tech and better level three tech. And that just makes the set way too consistent and way too strong. <laughs> it, it ends up looking like the way... Um... Uh, fate looks right now. Yeah, I, I think like if we fate. if we got a set three attack on Titan, we'd probably see what happened to we'd see what happened to Fate initially because Fate it came out in Japan, got banned, but English still has access to the full card pool except for like the three three event that healed three, um, which is whatever at this point. Like I mean, yeah, because every other card in, that you play in the deck says heal. Um, yeah, and like I mean, it just makes it more consistent. We've had yeah. this conversation before, but like I think the mo the biggest problem with that card is literally the brainstormer that says switch your hand for free because you don't want to keep climax climax in your hand. Oh yeah, and like, having having the ability to dish the climax off that effect too. Like yeah, it, like just 
busted. <laughs> uh, but so yeah, many no, mistakes I, with that one card. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if they did anything with Attack on Titan set three, it would be hey, it's gonna get banned in Japan, but they they won't say anything about English. So I think that's something that they'll probably have to pick up on here. Man. I, they, shortly they, they if really they keep need to going start, down that route. Yeah, like cuz they they need to look at why people are why they banned it in JP cuz like yeah. They had like fate's not okay. In my opinion, Attack on Titan is not okay. Yeah. Like there's no interactability. Well, I mean there's not a lot of interactability in this game either, but like it just feels really really shitty mm-hmm. to play like Alice currently is like all of my all of my cool combos are all reverse combos. Mm-hmm. And I get shut off by the entirety of Attack on Titans one in level one and level two stuff. Oh yeah, because it, it's just in, being a thing. Because <laughs> its entire level one and level two plan is play Aaron, and then at mm-hmm. level three play cool dudes. Like, yeah. and Aaron just just negates all of that. Yeah, and like there's a bunch of things that do it, but like Aaron adds a card that searches anything in your deck and moves the dude. Uh, it gets bigger and then returns to your hand as well. Like it just. Yeah. Well, it, it grabs a thing from waiting room that searches anything in deck while changing out the thing that you grabbed from the waiting room. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so if you had to have one English set right now, like, English, so like, we're talking Adventure adventure Time styled. Like, it's an like English... English ex- exclusive. English exclusive, but it's more of like an English license itself. Because like, the one I'm going to pick right now is Ruby. I would love to see Ruby in this game. I'm going to be honest... I don't have too much input just because I don't like a lot of like Western style stuff or like what's referred to as Western anime. Yeah. Uh, because my set is so, like locked solid on Spice Wolf. I'll spend ten grand if they release that set. That's not that's not Western. Uh yeah, no, I know. That's what I said. <laughs> I said pick an American exclusive. An American exclusive. Pick an English exclusive. Like if it like if Made in America stamped that shit. Made in America. God, that would be really hard. Because, like, the ones I think of right now are, like, Avatar. Yeah, that, I think Avatar's the other big one. Avatar's a really good one. Like, I mean, if they're, gonna, if they're going to rip on card, or, like, get cartoons to have card games, I'd probably go with um, um, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Ooh, like a, would, like a Cartoon Network set, like a Bunko set. We talked about this at one point, I believe. Yeah, we did. Like a no, Cartoon dude, Network would, Bunko set. I would, Ooh. I would build, I would just build a cheese deck from from uh, uh, Foster's Home, dude. Freaking fantastic! I just like the idea of like what what could be, but will never be. Because yeah. like Ruby will probably never be in anything. Speaking of another set that I think would be really cool, even if they only dot hack. The and they went cool. and they went through like all the different like versions of dot hacks. The, pro- like they the problem is dot hacks. Like the problem is dot hacks are actually really old. Yeah. Oh, I mean it's old and it kind of ha- it, it kind of has some exposure because there's been some games that have come out for it. There's like games and there's like I think been one movie in the last ten years, but like yeah, it's it's still very like very very niche. I mean, so with it being like very niche, I feel like there's still a presence there, and I think if they oh, yeah. did it right. I think they could get something out of the set just because so with like, them playing with a lot of like a, of the equip combo, like the new equip style combos that they have coming out in JP. I think that'd be a really cool mechanic. Uh, well, we'll talk about that here in a second. Later, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm actually not the most first on it. We might want to wait for Connor on that. <laughs> yeah, he'll know more. But yeah. like, so like that might be a topic for another show is just like new stuff coming out of JP. But like, yeah. it's just, there's just a lot of cool things like we could do, but like America's just not big enough, big enough of a market to like really do that. And like that's really what mm-hmm. they're testing with like Sakura, Clear Card, and um, like Adventure Time is and uh, and Batman and whatnot is testing the waters on like what uh, the Americans will want to see, what English will want to see. Yeah, I I think I think How doing big their English market exclusives. Is. I think English exclusives are a, it's a fantastic idea. Um, for testing the market is also a good idea just for any company. Oh yeah. But I think the biggest thing is for introducing a new set to English exclusive. I think it's meta development is something that also should be looked into. Mm. Um, just cause like Japan right now has a completely different meta than English oh, other yeah. than fates just busted as fuck. Yeah. Um, but they also uh, have like, 
25. They have so many other sets that have like yeah, cool like, effects like, hey, you can't burn me. Uh, well, I mean, it's Log on, Rise It's on that. level zero. Well, no, th th this oh. is on a level zero. It's on level zero? It goes down memory. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's level zero in, um, in uh, oh, geez, it's like the little animal show, like the Friends thing. I can't remember the name um, off the top of my head. Man, it's probably a show Connor watches. Yeah, it's the one with like the penguin that they like stood oh, by yeah. the picture. I know, what, the I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name of the show. For I life. can't remember the name of the show either. Well, but we can that out set has a level zero. When it goes, you pay one, put it in memory, and it stops all instances of burn one. Just burn one though. Just burn one. Just but burn one. for a lot of sets, yeah. like Attack on Titan, that makes your end game just feel so bad. You don't get to burn. <laughs> Every gets to burn one. Yeah. He's got to so, do I mean, raw damage. Yeah. Just just because that set is in JP, Attack on Titan's like, meow. <laughs> it just went right down the tubes. Let me see if I can find that. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, I think, I think there's definitely a lot of opportunity, but I think um, testing the waters to kind of see where the meta development goes yeah. is something that they need to... I, I would say it's important, but it's something that they also need to care for because if they want to be able to sustain the game. And another thing that I'm seeing by them testing things in um, in English is, you know, if we release something just for English, is it sustainable? Can we grow the market? And can we also s say, like, hey, Star Wars is a cheap IP to buy in Japan, but it's not. It's nowhere near cheap in English. Can we give them Star Wars and give them something else? And then we just have essentially two different games eventually. Yeah. Um, but by the way, it's Kimono Friends. Kimono Friends? Yeah, Kimono Friends has a level zero that just says, when I go to memory, stop all instances of one. Nuts. They have, they have other sets that also have that. My Log Rise has a 3-2. Really cool. yeah, I have to play that at level three. Yeah. What is this? Right? <laughs> Log Rise has to work so much harder to just get outed by a penguin. I mean, it's not... It's not it's not a penguin. Yeah, whatever. I mean, it's, it's a, I'm making it's a, a little, dumb joke. It's a little boy with a hat. A little boy with a hat. Yeah, dude. I can't yeah, remember his name, but he's the main character. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I think that covers everything that we were wanting to go over. Is there anything else you wanted to go over today? Uh, we actually had multicolor, but like we are actually been going for a solid like longer than I thought we were going to be able to go with these two topics. I mean, we kind of branched off on that third one. Oh, uh, we branched <laughs> off. Well, that was third one. That was our second one. Well, no, no, no. We we branched off from the because we we talked about reprints, and then we got into like other sets and stuff. Oh yeah, we kind of we kind of started uh, spieling. Yeah. I kind of wanted to extend a little bit. Then like I'm looking at the timestamp I had. We've actually been going for about a cool 40, 42 minutes. So that's not. I bad. mean, if you want to go into mono, um, we'll I see. think that'd be probably better for like another podcast if we can get like more people on it. Okay. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down again and then have that for like the next one. Yeah. Um, multi versus single. Well look forward for that then. And then what was the one we just had? We were just talking about it. Oh, uh the new new tech from JP. Oh yeah. Yep. That way we don't forget for next time. Yep. That'll be yeah, that'll that's... be a topic. So that way we don't have to like crunch our brains for topics next week. Yeah, I mean, and we'll have Connor for that topic, and oh yeah, he, hopefully, yeah, he, his card knowledge is superior, vastly superior, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you, you dwarf me, and he dwarfs you. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I know some stuff. I know what I would call the cool stuff, at least in my opinion. You you know the but, stuff that everyone talks about. Connor just yeah. knows. Connor, yeah. <laughs> Connor just he's an accumulation of knowledge. He is the library. He is the index. Did, did did you know Puyo has a has a color uh, that's not playable in the game because it's purple? Connor purple. knew that. Purple. <laughs> I, so here's the here's the thing. I know that it exists only because it's on Encore decks. <laughs> the the color purple is part of a searchable engine, and I was is like, really? Yeah. If you look, go to Encore decks, you can go to yeah. color, and purple is one of the options. And I was like, man, what what sets purple? <laughs> like that's really why? <laughs> why is it purple? <laughs> Dang it, they, they tipped you off about the secret purple color. Well, like, I think it would be cool if, like, their demo decks and, like, um, stuff like that were handed out in purple. Like, they're not playable for a tournament, but they're purple colored. So yeah. they teach you they teach you game mechanics while See, still being colors. Okay, so 
going off of that, I like the idea, but I also despise it because if I ever got to Worlds and I didn't really want to take it seriously, I'm totally taking a demo deck to play. <laughs> so what if what if the purple decks are uh, are uh, decks that are, have to be in their single format, like you can only play them as they are structured? So so structured decks essentially, so, but they're like, all sure. like for learning. They're all for learning. They're they're handed out as learning decks. But you're not allowed to like mix and match them. You can only mm-hmm. play it as it's listed. So like if you wanted cool. to, you you could you could take it a tournament and do it. But it has to be that exact list. I feel like that would be cool, but I feel like that also kind of breaks down the um, it breaks down the creative aspect of the game, which is already kind of limited because you have to build within your set. Yeah, but like, uh, but you yeah. do also like it is a teaching deck. It's not meant yeah. to be played competitively. Yeah. So like if you wanted to, you're still forced into that one. You're forced into it because you're trying to play a teaching deck for no reason. Yeah, the I mean the only other thing that I would not necessarily like about that is the fact that learning color management, once you start getting into a lot of meta heavy stuff, and this kind of oh, goes yeah. into the color the color stuff, but learning color management is also very important. Oh, um, I was thinking more of, of like so I was thinking more of like having so like you could also like um so like each set comes like each month comes out like a new set for like this is English obviously for like each set comes out the each month comes out with a new set. Mm-hmm. You could have like a single color that gets splashed into those teaching decks. Yeah. Just like basic things. So like that color's still playable inside the teaching deck. But it's cool. from the current set. So like you could still learn the two color stuff. But oh. get stuck with but you so like it's neutral. Purple's just a neutral color. It's That'd practically cool. no color. It had, so, doesn't have a so like it's just blank cards. They don't have licenses. They don't have like characters. They're just like X and Y, Z, whatever. Well, no, no, no. If like if they had characters from the set that they're being printed of, but say it was like a, uh, it, it's your, it's your demo deck set essentially, yeah. but it's, it's all purple. It's non-competitive. It's like there, there's man, is that there should but, be? I think JP has it. They have that, promos. That, that, that they have like, promos that are the uh, Weiss Schwartz. They have yeah. and Schwartz. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, this so, like, if they built an entire set, yeah, I know. But like, what if they built an entire set around Weiss? Not like like a set, but like a like a teaching set around mm-hmm. Weiss and Schwartz. That'd be pretty. Cool. And it was under purple, and you can mix it and match. And it was the only set you're able to mix and match with things, but only on that'd a teaching cool. purpose. Yeah, but only I for think teaching that'd be purposes. Cool. Actually, that was that. That's actually a good idea. I kind of want to go back through all my stuff and see if I can build like. Hey, this is like a very entry level deck to learn the game. Hey, this is yeah. a, a deck that introduces you to some more different mechanics. So like you and have like your basic you, you have like your basic one, which is more of like your trial decks, which is just like you get like a one or two, three twos. I'd say beyond that. I'd say it's it's strictly like the very first demo deck. You're playing with vanillas just to kind of learn, you know, oh, swing like stuff like, like the very basic mechanic. Then you get into like a trial deck level where it's introducing a couple things. Yeah. And then you so get like you get like um, you get like Milky Homes, uh, uh, teaching demo decks, yeah. demo deck, and then you get like trial deck demo decks, and then you get like your structured demo decks, which are just more of like more bigger mechanics, encore, brainstorm, stuff yeah. like that, where like it teaching you all the really harder, much harder stuff to learn. I think it'd be really yeah. cool. Yeah, I think I think that might be something I look into to help with like you know introducing new players. Obviously, oh, yeah. I'm. I'd say I'm nowhere near the best at explaining mechanics, but I think if I had that set of tools, it would help. Oh yeah, I think I think demo decks are like it's really weird because like demo decks are needed. I think for all card games, mm-hmm. but like depending on the, like the demo deck, sometimes it's just really hard. Yeah, it's kind of well, the same I mean, way I feel about trial decks too. I, I'd say for Vice, it's it's kind of difficult because there's a lot of mechanics. On top of the mechanics, there's a hot, uh, I'd say. Uh, a high-ish skill cap. Yeah. So like, since you play UFS, that's one of the largest, like, like entry it has a barriers. High, it's like, that has a huge entry barrier for skill. Yeah. yeah, huge entry barrier, but then on top of that, since everything is intercompatible, every, like, you have to know every card. And I'm just there's like, a lot of, there's, there's an entry level for skill, and then, like, there's an even bigger entry level for just, like, card pool knowledge. Yeah, and that's like that's I, why I talk I think... about I talk about UFS like on the UFS podcast I talk about it a lot where like our entry level is really high and then it kind of plateaus a little bit because like you get you get you learn how to play the game and you're kind of like you like the game once you learn it is very easy and it functions very smoothly 
but yeah. learning is the harder part. And then it kind of plateaus, and then you want to jump to competitive, and you have to make this big jump again because, like, we have a lot of cards in our game as well as just, like, a lot of different combos and interactions and our rule books a lot more um, uh, interactive because, like, everything, yeah. on our, everything in our game does something. So, like, there's always cha- there's always windows for responses and ch- chaining stuff and whatnot. So, like, there's so much more to learn. So, like, you get to that one. And then I always talk about how, like, there's one last jump, which is just going from competitive to, like, your top level play. Like, your, yeah. your like, top eights, World top fours. Yeah, yeah, like, all that. Where, like, you have to make this third jump, and it's, like, that one's the hardest one to make. Because sometimes yeah. you can just accidentally, like, you can accidentally, like, fall in t- up there, and then you fall back out. And you have no clue how you did it, and you'll never get there again. It's a common yeah. curse for UFS, which is just randomly getting second place at worlds and never getting close to an event ever again <laughs> yeah no, I, and i feel like that would that's kind of the same with it's kind of the same with by chores except for your card pool knowledge is easier just because on certain things can only go together whereas in other a lot of other yeah. games, magic ufs and like, stuff like in that, my opinion as like you, as you dumb as it sounds it. and in my opinion as dumb as it sounds like why schwartz isn't super complicated there's not yeah. a lot of like player to player interaction as much as uh, like other card games. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, there's a lot more luck that goes into it. Yeah, no, I'd say there's definitely, especially in- even at like a competitive level, like just playing competitively random, random times you just get hit for eight straight and you can't stop it. Like there's nothing you could do. Like it just, yeah. it happens. There's definitely a bit of luck, but I, I think part of the, part of the skill and vice, once you get to like high, high end play is knowing when to push that luck. It's knowing when to push the luck, but also essentially, I'd say it gets into a point where it's kind of it's kind of like um, Pokemon regionals. Like Pokemon regionals, for, I'm talking about the VGC, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It's essentially you're uh, looking bluffing. at your opponent and you're trying bluffing. to cold you're trying to cold read them to get information. At high level vice play, I feel like once you're at those top tables, you're looking your opponent up and down, making sure he's not doing anything that he shouldn't be, making sure he's not, you know, miss missing missing any of his text but on top of that you're trying to read and see you know hey right now his his board state is he has six climaxes out where are the last two does he have one in hand or does he not and it's getting to that point of what cards they have in hand that could effectively counter what you're attempting you to start do counting to you have to count there's a lot of counting yeah. to happen yeah yeah it's one of the things mean, i noticed like because like i play competitively for like other card games so like one of the reasons i absolutely love log horizon right now is uh, how much game knowledge I can manipulate that my opponent won't know of. Yeah. Because, like, with a bunch of the zero drops, I could just stuff things under my deck yeah. in certain orders and then not have to worry about things. And then, like, I'll stack it a certain way to where, like, they'll trigger my last climax. I'll have stuff in deck, and then I can just play the free fresher for free and then yeah. not have to not have to take that refresh damage. Like, it just... like I, It's one of the reasons I wanted to look at um, lo, uh, No Game No Life. Because mm-hmm. I heard it has a lot of like deck manipulation and uh, game manipulation as well. Yeah, actually, I I think building building on that, no game, no life is a pretty affordable set. So I'd actually recommend you taking a peek at that, just because the the main level one combo that you play, it's one of the first combos, at least in English, that they printed that said, "Hey, when I'm going to swing with this combo, I can look at I think the it's like the four, top right? top." No, it's like top three card, top two or three of your deck, and you can choose oh, one of them and you put it to the top of your stock instead of the bottom. <laughs> this is before you swing, and I think that's yeah. something for you as a player that that you could really like, get behind. Oh yeah, like it's one of the reasons I looked at because somebody, uh, because like it's one of the things I noticed because like um, me and Brent have a lot of Brent's one of a, another local player that doesn't play that often actually. Uh, uh we like counting. We Fair. really like counting. So, like, he really likes to – I heard he likes to play that uh, No Game, No Life deck. And mm-hmm. um, so, like, that intrigued me a little bit because, like, I know me and him have similar play styles on, like, counting cards, understanding where things are at certain moments and pushing our luck on certain points. So, like, I was going to look at that. I think my build I, – I don't have a build, but, like, my list of, like, stuff I'm looking at is, like, 96 one-ofs. Jesus. Yeah, but I, I have to make cuts. It's like a, it's like a four-color deck, but, like, it pushes – Right now it has three level three level three combos I have to pick through, so we'll have to figure that out. Nice. Hey, I mean we could we could take a look at that. As we, well. we could do that. We could do that later. All right. We'll probably do it after the post show. But uh we should yeah. probably close out this podcast. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for checking out the podcast, guys. Uh 
as I said, uh, this is just a buddy cast. Uh, not everybody can make it today. Obviously, everybody's still in quarantine and whatnot. So make sure to check out our content. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, give us topics for future podcasts as well. Uh, make sure to check out the other uh, podcasts we run if you enjoy Magic, uh, po- um, Final Fantasy. I almost said Pokemon. We don't do Pokemon right now. Um, Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Magic, Final Fantasy, and Universes. If you haven't checked any of those out, go ahead and do that. Uh, and as always, guys, stay alert. Oh, wait, wait. I'm going to throw in an additional thing. Make sure to support your locals in these hard Yeah. Go to your important. LGSs. Support that. Well, don't, need, don't necessarily need, go, but buy cards. <laughs> you, you need an LGS to come back to. Support your LGS. See you guys next time. Bye.